Good morning. This is going to be my third video on the upcoming lunar month from the new moon on July 17th uh, up to the new moon on August 16th. Uh, in the first video, I just talked about uh, how the astrological influences will affect everyone in general. In the second video, I focused on America. In this third video, I'm going to talk about Russia. And then I'll also do a fourth video where I'll talk specifically about Putin. Okay, and this will probably be uh, somewhat short, but let me see if I can go ahead and share my screen. Okay, I need to uh, hide a few controls that I see here. Get things out of the way. And I think we're ready to go. So this will be the lunar month for Russia, July 17, 2023 through August 16, 2023. And here is a uh, uh, by wheel where the chart on the inside is that for Russia, set for 1991. Uh, when it was uh, reformulated, uh, when the Soviet Empire broke up, if you will. And outside are the uh, transits during the time of the new moon on July 17th. Okay. Now, what I have shown inside here are aspects that are within one degree of being exact because those are going to be the ones which are going to be the strongest. So that's what I'm going to focus on. Also, I'm not necessarily going to cover every aspect here. Uh, I'm only going to, going to uh, talk about those which are going to last for a while. For example, aspects made by the sun, they come and go very quickly. They're not going to have much of a lasting influence. But those that last a longer period of time, they're probably going to make a difference. Okay, now there's one other thing I want to mention, and that is that uh, I don't have the same amount of information about what's going on in Russia as I do America. Uh, I certainly understand a lot of what's happening in America because I live here. And thus, when I interpret uh, transits for America, I can more easily put things into context. I have a greater sense of what will likely happen and what may not happen. But Russia, in, a different, in addition to being a, a foreign country, it's also a somewhat closed society. We don't get that much information about what's really happening uh, on the street, how people really feel about things. So with some of the uh, astrological indications here, I do know pretty much what is uh, going on in Russia. I have a pretty good idea. But other times I have to just talk about it in general terms because I don't really know what specific manifestation of these things that people are choosing. Okay, with all that, let's get started. Now, the first thing uh, we have here is transiting Uranus is in opposition to natal Pluto. Uh, Pluto's at uh, 21 degrees uh, Scorpio. Transiting Uranus is at 22 degrees uh, Taurus. So this aspect is separating. But nonetheless, what does this mean? Well, it's a push or a desire for a change in leadership. The planet Uranus always wants to break up the existing pattern, bring about some change. And in parentheses, I note that Pluto rules Putin's first house and is in his 10th house. So in Russia's chart, uh, Pluto definitely refers to Putin. And of course, in terms of rebellion, well, we saw the Wagner Group rebellion on June 23rd. And this aspect should be in effect uh, from mid-June through early August. Okay, I'll also mention that for well over half a year, I've been expecting uh, or anticipating the possibility of some sort of revolt in Russia. 
as a result of aspects like this one here. So I wasn't really surprised when uh, the Wagner group was suddenly marching on Moscow. Okay, now we also have transiting Uranus in opposition uh, to natal Venus. Uh, Venus is in conjunction with Pluto down here in Russia's chart, so they really act together. Now, what this signif uh, sig what this uh, indicates is changing values among the people and likely dissatisfaction with Putin. Venus is in Putin's first house and rules his sun sign Libra, so both Venus and uh, Pluto in Russia's chart are going to be indicators of Putin. And this one uh, is going to last a long time, July through October. Normally, uh, Venus is moving pretty fast and the aspects it forms are very brief. But Venus is slowing down, it's gonna turn retrograde. So that is why this one is gonna last quite a while. Okay, the next aspect we have is transiting Pluto, making a sesquiquadrant uh, with natal Jupiter. And a sesquiquadrant, it's uh, an aspect that's in some ways kind of a minor irritation. It's also a turning point or breaking point. And this one indicates difficulties when it comes to expansion or growth at this time in Russia. It could also indicate transformation of ideas because Jupiter, uh, which is the drive to grow and expand, it's in the third house, which has to do with the ideas of the people. And this will be in effect February through mid-August. So it's actually been out there for quite a while. But this is one of those areas where without actually being in Russia, being out on the streets and seeing what's happening, I can't be exactly certain how this uh, particular influence is manifesting at this time. I can just get a sort of a general idea. Okay, let's see, we have transiting Venus making a sesquiquadrant with uh, natal Uranus, hence possible tension between the values of the people and the hardships caused by revolutionary excursions into other countries. Also possible economic and health difficulties. <clears throat> and this is an effect uh, through the second half of July. So it'll be over with in uh, a couple of weeks. Now, Venus tends to rule the values of the people. It's the right brain. It's what we like, what we don't like. That nonverbal map of reality that we put together. Uh, the planet Uranus rules revolution. It rules the seventh house in Russia's chart. So that can be other countries. And it's in the sixth house, which has to do uh, with health. Uh, transiting Venus is going through the second house, which has to do with resources. Hence. Uh, the possible economic and health difficulties. Okay, now Jupiter is making a semi-square to the south node and a sesquiquadrant to the north node. Again, these are slightly tense aspects <coughs> representing turning points or breaking points, minor irritations. Jupiter's growth expansion, it's in the third house of ideas. So more challenges when it comes to growth and expansion. And this is also active throughout the second half of July. Let's see. Now we also have transiting Jupiter making a quincunx uh, to natal Mercury in the fifth house. And I've written here that the people will likely have to make mental adjustments in order to find any sense of freedom or expansive joy. And it's going to be active uh, during the middle half of July. So again, Jupiter is growth expansion, also freedom. Uh, the quincunx is an aspect that requires some adjustments to be made between the two drives that are involved. So changes occur. Uh, Mercury rules the mind, but it's also in the fifth house, which has to do with uh, pleasure and recreation. 
and that's where we get all the different associations over here. Okay, now we have, let's see, Mars uh, is making a quincunx to natal Saturn. And Mars is in the second house. Saturn is in the seventh house, which has to do with other countries. Uh, in this case, second house has to do with finances and resources. So adjustments involving resources and other countries will likely have to be made during this brief period. And this will be active for a few days, almost a week uh, in the third quarter of July. All right. This one's a bit more mysterious or a bit more subtle in some ways. We have transiting Chiron is making a trine to natal Mars uh, in the fifth house. Uh, because this is a good aspect, we might anticipate the better aspects of Chiron. Uh, Chiron is the drive which urges us to transcend but this time it might help bring about transcendence without wounding us because most people are not that conscious of, uh, are not so aware of how Chiron is playing out in their lives. This might uh, work on a more subconscious level. Nonetheless, what I have written over here is that the drive to transcend is coordinating well with physical action, Mars, and people may find healing, Chiron, through intimacy, fifth house. And this is in effect from mid-May through September, so it's already been around for a while. Uh, people may be releasing some of the tensions of this time uh, through a certain kind of transcendence that they're now experiencing through physical intimacy or they may be engaging in other kinds of physical sports and pleasures. Now let's take a look at the full moon in Russia. The full moon is on uh, August 1st, 2023. And some of those uh, aspects that are uh, acting a long time, uh, there's still an effect such as uh, transiting Uranus in opposition uh, to natal Pluto, and that is indicating that the people want a change in leadership right now. And of course, that exploded in terms of the Wagner Group's rebellion on June 23rd, and against an effect from mid-June through early August. And of course, we still have uh, transiting Uranus, and opposition uh, to natal Venus, indicating once more changing values among the people and likely dissatisfaction with Putin. And this will be in effect a long time from July through October. So there is pressure out there for a change in leadership in Russia, uh, pressure that the people are probably aware of, but we may not see uh, over here uh, being so far away from this closed society. Okay, what else do we have? Well, this is another one, uh, which was an effect at the new moon and is also an effect at the full moon, transiting Pluto, uh, making a sesquiquadrate uh, to Jupiter. Again, difficulties when it comes to expansion or growth at this time in Russia. Uh, but also transformation of ideas. So people's minds may be changing and uh, they are probably experiencing all sorts of personal hardships as a result of the sanctions. And if you look at this on this particular day, the day before, uh, transiting Mars for a couple of days, it's in conjunction with this Jupiter. That's going to intensify things. So there could be uh, some uh, violence around the time of the new moon. I'm sorry, the full moon. Okay. Now, we also have, during the full moon, transiting Saturn is making a semi-sextal to natal Saturn. 
So adjustments being made that are related to frustrations or other restrictions, particularly those involving other countries since natal Saturn is in the seventh house, which rules others. And this is an effect from the last quarter of July through the first three quarters of August. And this one, this is another one we saw at the time of the new moon. It's repeating again, still in effect at the uh, full moon, transiting Chiron, making that trine uh, with natal Mars in the fifth house. So again, that drive to transcend is coordinating well with physical, physical action. People may find healing through intimacy. And this is in effect mid-May through September. Okay, this one is interesting. We have transiting Jupiter is making a trine uh, to natal Uranus in the sixth house. And this is a very beneficial aspect. So that this suggests growth and innovation and possibly the sick and infirmed are being well treated and are being treated uh, humanely. Uh, we talk about the six and, and the infirm because Uranus is in the sixth house of health and occupation. Uh, we talk about humane treatment because that is a characteristic of um, Aquarius, which Uranus rules. And we also have possibility of improved relations with other countries because Aquarius is on the cusp of the seventh house, which uh, in a mundane chart rules other countries. And this is, in effect, mid-July through early August. Now, transiting Jupiter is also making a trine to natal Jupiter down here uh, in the third house. And this could be a period of some good fortune, growth, and joy. And note that on this day, transiting Jupiter will also complete a grand trine uh, with natal Jupiter and natal Uranus. You can see this triangle right here. And this particular trine is going to last longer than the previous one. It's going to last uh, from about August through uh, early October. Okay, so there may be some things that are looking up for Russia. Let me also point out that a lot of times when you look at the uh, transits for a particular chart. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. It's not like mixing uh, cold water with hot water and getting lukewarm water. Instead, it's like a, a tossed salad. Uh, both the good and the bad are there at the same time, side by side. So what's actually going on here? Well, Russia appears to desire a change in leadership, but whether that happens depends, too, on how tight Putin's grip on power is. Plus, despite struggles and adjustments, Russia may experience some good times from August through early October. So there's this push for change, I believe, in Russia. They want a change in leadership. They want that very strongly. Their values are going to be changing, and that's going to go on for a while. Uh, whether they will be able to bring about that change in leadership? Well, that's another question. I strongly believe that desire is there. And from August uh, through early October, uh, they may experience a bit more growth and easing of tensions and uh, some good times. Okay, well, that's it for this presentation. Let me see if I can stop sharing. And I'm back. So, uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this brief video, and I hope you also uh, watch the one that I'm going to uh, put together in a few minutes on how this lunar month is going to affect Putin. And trust me, Putin is going to have a lot more difficulties than uh, Russia as a whole is going to have in this coming lunar month. So I hope to see you soon. So long.